Hi and welcome to this new series from Smart Vision Europe where we're really focusing on SPSS statistics and uh, how people can get the best out of the software by looking at a bunch of little techniques and procedures that other people don't know about but they seem to find fairly useful. And the very first thing we're going to look at is changing the default settings which isn't as boring as it sounds because really it helps people customize their usage of the software so they can be a lot more productive. So let's have a little look at how we do that. So there's one sub menu where we can change all of our default settings and customize our experience of the software and that's under the edit menu, it's right at the bottom, it's called the options sub menu. A lot of people just refer to it as edit options. And when I jump out to SPSS, this is SPSS version 24, you'll find that menu as I say under edit options right at the bottom, you click it open and what, what that does is generates a dialog box, a fairly busy dialog box with lots of different tabs within it where we can change lots of different settings and uh, you know really customize the software. So one of the first things I'm going to draw your attention to is this business here, a variable list where it says display labels, display names, or change the order from alphabetical to file to measurement level. These are the actual default settings. And we're going to point to something else here, which is opening one data set at a time as an option. So at the moment it's display labels. This is usually not a big not a big problem for people. The label, of course, is the variable label that's set up against the uh, against uh, the data set. So we've got lots of variable labels which are shown down here against these different uh, fields within the data set. Um, and it's usually not an issue because if I go here to, for example, frequency tables, we can see that here's the variable labels being shown. They all make complete sense. It's not an issue. But when we get to the bottom here, we've got a bunch of fields where it says thinking about your initial experiences when you first joined the company, how would you rate the welcome you received? And it's a very long label. You know, if you really want to see the full label, you've either got to hover over the individual field. If you're trying to find a particular field there, let's say there's a field in there about management, you've got to try and find it. There it is, it's right at the bottom, it's rating number five, management. That can be a pain. So what one of the things you can do, of course, you can just right click and say, okay, we'll change the display to names and it will do that. But you know, if you're if you're doing that every single time you open up a dialog box, again, it's a pain. Um, sometimes you're trying to find certain types of fields and you've got lots and lots of fields, maybe hundreds of fields. So you're kind of searching down through the data set. So that's why people have the option to sort alphabetically or sort in file order or sort by uh, field type, which is really um, the measurement level. Um, so the default is just sort by file order from uh, left to right within the file, but we can change these defaults. We go to edit options here. Of course, we can say just display the names, for example, uh, change the order if you wanted, and hit apply. And if you hit apply, it says, okay, well, if you've got any dialog boxes open, these are gonna reset them, but we haven't got any dialog boxes open. So, so this isn't a really uh, a problem or a message to really worry about. The next thing we notice is it says open only one data set at a time. This is the other thing I wanted to draw your attention to. Again, it's a very common issue that people have. Some people really like the fact that they can have multiple data sets open at the same time within SPSS statistics. Other people don't. It's, you know, And they really just want to be able to work with one file at a time because they find it confusing jumping back and forth between files. So you can restrict that and you can say, okay, well, I only want to open one data set at a time. If you go to edit options again, just switch on open one data set at a time, hit apply. It doesn't mean that everything's closed down in the background, it just means from that point forward you'll be opening one data set at a time. So for example, if I start to shut down these open data sets here, just got to be careful you don't shut down the last one. If I went here to file, new data, you know, it's, it's still going to have a new file, a new file open there next to it that doesn't, does, that doesn't really count. But if I try to open, say, multiple data sets, text, text messages, this one's called. And I've got another one here called um, forecast updated. It's just saying, okay, it's just warning me that it's running in Unicode mode, that doesn't really matter. But it just basically opens up that, that file and it closes down the other file. So being able to restrict the number of data sets you open at a time, you know, is quite useful for a lot of people and they find that quite quite a good uh, function to be able to override the default there. Okay, what else can we look at? Let's go to edit options. Again, start to work our way through the tabs. So we've got language settings here. 
nothing terribly interesting there. One of the things which is really useful, one of the things the default to I change is the fact that when you do an analysis within SPSS using the default settings, it usually shows you the uh, the syntax that you're running. And you know it's important for people to know that in the background, SPSS is generating SPSS syntax. And it gives them the opportunity to look at it and review it. But a lot of people just find it gets in the way. So for example, if I just go into a frequency table of gender and job cat, click OK. It goes and runs that and it squirts that. But you can see <clears throat> in the background here, it's showing me things like frequencies. It's showing me here. It's giving me a warning here from earlier on. That type of thing can be cluttering up the output and you don't necessarily want to see it all the time. Particularly if you're doing uh, a procedure that generates lots and lots of syntax, like a tables procedure here, for example, if I went into and generate a tables procedure and put job cut in there and age band along the bottom and age across the top and, and some gender as a subgroup within that. And, you know, I can really go to town in this and create lots of categories and totals and so on and so on. If I hit click OK at that point, you know, it's starting to generate a lot more verbose syntax. Is there a way for me to hide it? Well, again, I can manually uh, use the navigator along the side here and look at the log here, which is this piece of syntax. I'm going to just double click on it and it's hidden. So you can double click on it to get a little closed book symbol, hidden, open book symbol uh, displayed. Again, within edit options, if I go to viewer here, we can take any bits of these uh, parts of our output and show them or hide them initially. So I can take the log and say, I want it hidden, and hit apply, click OK. Let's, um, let's highlight everything here, Control A, just delete everything. We'll just run our custom tables again. We did earlier on, and we can't see the log because it's, it's hidden at the top here. So again, quite a useful little procedure. Let's look at a couple of extra ones. So we're turning to the Edit Options menu at the top here. We just go to Edit Options. And this time we're going to look at um, the next tab across, which is the data tab. Look at the data tab here. And again, quite useful. People will know that when uh, you create new fields within SPSS, that it creates a field with a width of eight and two decimal places. So you can change that. If you find the business of creating extra decimal places isn't very useful, you can do that. Also, if you're working with a lot of two digit years, you might want to control when the two digits actually begin. So. The default settings are that the two digit years run from 1948 to 2047, but you can overrule that, and so on and so on. So you can play around with this. And in the variable view tab at the bottom here, you've actually got an order in which things appear. So you can click on customize variable views. So you can change the order or, you know, hide things that you don't want to see. And also, there are you know spelling dictionaries within SPSS or spelling control. If for whatever reason it's using the wrong dictionary, you can change it here. So you can say, I want to use, you know, UK English rather than US English or German or whatever. So you can actually change the dictionaries here. Um, so that's kind of useful. The next thing that's really useful is currencies. So it, you'll notice that when you create a new field within the SPSS, one of the options that you have is to create a field of a dollar in the front of it. Well, there are the options to create your own custom currencies. You can have up to five custom currencies. So, for example, here, if you're in the UK, you might use custom currency A here with a pound symbol next to it. So you've used up that slot, if you like, and shows you an example of a positive uh, value and a negative value. Here's custom currency B. Let's say, you know, you're working within Europe and you want to um, use a euro symbol. You can do that. So you can add that in and hit apply. So there you've got two custom currencies. So if you came here and said, OK, I want to create a new field, let's call it, let's call it euro value something like that and I went to type I can go to numeric I can say well I'm going down here to custom currency and custom currency B click OK go back here let's see it's right at the end of the data set I start to type in numbers here you can see that it starts to turn up with the with the uh, our custom currency symbol next to it so that's quite useful go to edit options plus currency and then on the output side here nothing terribly uh, controversial here it's really about whether or not you just want the labels to appear whether you want the names and labels to appear the variable names and the variable labels to appear and then with regard to the values appearing do you want the labels do you want the values the codes if you like and and the uh, and the late the value labels appearing so most people don't really change those things if I go to charts I find this actually 
So another one of the areas where I tend to change the default settings, particularly with regard to the colors. The default colors for charts in uh, SPSS is usually, I think the default color is usually something, something like sort of sandy sort of color. I usually change that and say, well, actually for default chart, I want, I want a different color, I choose a red. And then with regard to the group charts, the order in which it goes through, I usually just change these. I've already altered this one, but for example, I could change that or I could switch it back to red or something like that. So I could just change the order in which and say, these are the colors I want you to choose. And this is the order I want you to choose them in as you're going through and creating charts, you know, with um, uh, multiple colors. And even things like the chart aspect ratio, whether or not you want it square or rectangular um, and so on and so on. And then on pivot tables, again, this is really important. This is a very important area. Uh, this is the system default look for pivot tables within SPSS version 24. I actually create my own pivot table looks. It's something that you might point to later on one of our series. But you can choose different looks from a menu of looks. In fact, within uh, the Smart Vision website, we've created a bunch of table looks you can download. You can browse from them from here. You can change the default look. So you can say, okay, well, I want this to be my, you know, my default look from this point onwards. So this is, again, very useful because we're changing really the aesthetic properties of the, the output. You can see there's a lot of different table looks there. And remember, of course, as I say, you can, you can create your own types and say, okay, well, that's going to be my, my, my default table look that I want to use from this point onwards. Um, file locations, again, very important. Every time you go to file open, whether it be opening a piece of output or opening a data file, of course, it defaults to a particular folder. And I think it usually goes to the uh, My Documents folder, which, which might be fine. But for a lot of people, they're, they're storing their data files and their output in a particular place. Here I've got my data files and my D drive is DSE demos. So you can just change the location of these. And pretty much lastly, the really important is the fact that everything that you do within SPSS is saved away uh, in a syntax in a sort of black box uh, called the statistics journal file. And if I just open up that file, I can see here, here, here's where it's showing me where it's storing it. It's on append, that means format, that means it's just constantly uh, overwriting, uh, sorry, it's constantly adding extra procedures onto the end, it's not overwriting itself. And really that's the last option I just wanted to show you, the last little trick, the rest isn't, it is fairly esoteric, but if I went to file open here and showed you that journal file, if I go to file open syntax, you can see that I can open up the syntax. The very first time I installed this copy was on the 19th of October 2016. And this is pretty much every procedure this copy of SPSS has run. So this is really powerful because of course if I make a mistake or the machine crashes I can just go and open up the last procedures that I ran and copy and paste them back out like this one here. Let's say I just want to copy and paste this back out into uh, a syntax window because I didn't save the output or something like that. I can just rerun it again. And it just reruns that table for me, now using my new default setting. So I hope you find that useful. Please keep an eye out for uh, the next uh, item in our series, uh, which we'll be updating and uploading pretty soon. Thanks very much.